Let's get right into the news. Let's see, let's go to let's go to the damn You don't wanna get down low. Don't go okay, you go to bed. All women do is sleep. Uh, Laura, I, I'm on stream right now. Don't say that. I'm sorry, but it's true. I, I, it's not me that you need to pull out. I, I don't think you want everyone knowing that. I don't think you want everyone to know that. Yes. What do you mean? What's the point? A lot of people go back and watch them. What was that? It was a message. Why is your vibration turned up so hard? It's it's echoing off the wood. Yeah, I know. How can I fix that? Okay. Let's see. Maybe it's not unbearably laggy, it's no big deal. Okay, hello. Uh, welcome back to the first uh, Charlesonian News Network. And uh, so this year, actually, I think we started, <laughs> the last one was in November or December of last year. So, are you watching me? That's weird. Don't do that. Um, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Oh, so you'd rather have loads of people listening to you but watching me like this i know i well, know i'm not really watching you since i am legally blind laura you're not legally blind if i have to have it put on my driver's license that i have is it on your driver's license yes okay then i am legally blind there. I okay but well, you can see me you can hear me doesn't matter it's fine. I guess I'll wait till you're asleep then. Good night. What's the matter? I'm not thinking, okay, it's fine. Sorry. Hello, everybody. Good to see you again. Uh, I know we've been gone for uh, several months now. It's actually been, it's, I think, November of last year since we uh, last recorded uh, one of these to keep you guys updated. And, uh, of course, back then we were in the middle of the Coalition War. And so... Before we can get started back up, it's important that we do this so that everyone can be caught up with what's happened since then. Because uh, I know a lot of people relied on these to have an understanding of what's going on. So, let's go ahead and get started with, first off, the Coalition was beaten, basically. Uh, 
and all the Fredistan territories were given to Lopad. Uh, there were some issues with Fred after that, with him trying to reclaim the territories and all that. So Lopad created a proxy war with Galeria, or using Galeria to fight Fredistan to keep them at bay. This plot was figured out, a bunch of controversy. Fred left the server for the first time, keep that in mind. Uh, that's going to be a, a reoccurring theme here. Anyway, fast forward a few weeks, maybe two or three, um, the spawn factions begin to um, uh, formulate this idea of a mutual uh, agreement to keep spawn out of Lopad's hands since the news was starting to spread that spawn would go independent or be claimable on January the 6th. Um, and this plot was figured, not really a plot, but um, this idea of the Alliance for Free Spawn, which is what it was called, it was found out and leaked to Lopad, who just a day prior had found Fred stealing um, Lopad and Dankus ships and storing them at Port Charles, which had been renovated by Fred, to house ships. Um... He, this obviously, they uh, didn't like this, and after the leaks, they declared war, thinking that they were going to basically wipe the map and absolutely destroy them. They expected a really easy victory, like with the Coalition War. They didn't take the AFFS seriously at all. Lopad, at the time, the combined force of Lopad Dankus had about maybe 40 people that they could get online for a battle. Um... First battle comes along, January 6th, uh, the Alliance for Free Spawn does really well. <laughs> they, uh, they win at what is now called the McCook Massacre, where they killed every single Lopad combatant and forced them to retreat. This is the first time Lopad has lost at all this season. Uh, obviously they were all excited. And after this, things just kind of went downhill for Lopad. They've had a lot of people either go inactive, turn on them, or quit. They're down to struggling to get 12 people on for a battle now. Um, after the first battle, uh, the Ma McCook Massacre, the AFFS took Spawn. Spawn is their control. And basically created a, a divide between Northern and Southern Spawn. Uh, they set their sights on Mephisto next because it was the lowest, um, what was it? Lowest risk area that they could attack, highest reward. They that battle ended in a stalemate due mostly uh, to Lopad hiring some very talented mercenaries who were able to keep up with the uh, AFFS's Scarlet Plague Squadron, which is comprised of quote-unquote PBP lords. Um, the next week after that, Lopad shows the uh, sector which has Charles Shire and Port Dankus um, because they thought it would be easier or more beneficial to them to, to risk Port Dankus for a major Charles Onion outpost and then I think the six forts in that area that Charles Onion owned. Uh, this backfired terribly. The AFFS was able to completely destroy their offensive um, maneuver on Charleshire, and their counteroffensive was insanely effective. They killed every single person, and they renamed Port Port Dankus to McPuck, and it was given to Omega Craft. The next week after that. They went back to Mephisto. We had two battles in two weeks in Mephisto. There was a lot of controversy about the first one. Indecisive, I would say, um, on that one because of the issues that happened. We won't get into that. But the second one, uh, the AFFS did, in fact, take over Mephisto. It is called the Mephisto Massacre for the same reasons that the McCook Massacre is called a massacre. Um, and so they renamed that to Swagtopia and began creating these pathways that connected all of their territories. All of Spawn is connected now, and I personally connected Swagtopia to Spawn. Um, 
After that, we had the recent battle at Fintia, which was another massacre. Um, the, 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 the Lopad defenses at Fintia were completely d demolished. Um, they put up a better fight than they usually do. Um, but it's just the, the Scarlet Squadron with the AFFS, it's incredibly effective. And it's going to be really difficult for the Lopad Alliance to figure out something to do against them. Because it really just does come down to talent here. They're going to have to use some kind of tactic that negates that going forward. So in short, the war is going terribly for Lopad right now. And everyone acknowledges that. The AFFS is on a really, really high horse right now. And has refused all peace deals uh, that do not include just the complete surrender of Lopad. And keeping all of the territories for themselves that they have taken. Peace talks have occurred so far several times, but each time it just ends in an argument and everyone pretty much just leaving angry. Also, after the first Mephisto battle, Fred betrayed the AFFS. Then, he lost terribly at bol uh, the next Mephisto battle, wasn't seen online for a while, and then quit. He griefed a... He did an, he was involved in an illegal grief, and Easton Burton claimed that it was all him. We now know that that wasn't true. But he used this as an excuse to just quit for the second time since the... and in recent memory. Uh, no one is begging him to return. We won't be doing that. If he wants to leave, let him do it. His decision. His fault. Uh, all the issues that he's ever had were his own fault, pretty much. Speaking of which, Easton Burton has been sentenced to somewhere around 90 hours in jail and 20 hours in slavery, um, mandatory slavery, because he was he has admitted to duping and getting a stream banned and a, an account struck for two weeks um the the currently pending um charge is the mentioned uh raid farm grief that he blamed on fred we pretty much know it was easton he just won't admit to it um but he was charged for both doing the grief and then trying to pin it on fred afterwards in other news, um, the next battle will occur two weeks from now. No, it's been a week. So next next week, next Saturday. And this Saturday, on the battle day and time, it's the exact same time we normally have a battle, we're going to have a battle box, the first one in a while. And going forward, all battle boxes will have the winner recorded on a list. And in May, May the 1st, or the first Saturday in May, we are going to have a quote-unquote mega battle box where all of the PvP lords of the server will be able to fight one another on, f on p with fair, equal gear, maxed gear, actually, and we will finally be able to decide who the best PvPer on the server is. Not only will this come with a title, which is a ranking game, uh, which I'll probably, it'll be like a cool symbol or whatever, um, but you'll also be able to say that you are the best PvP on the server. There's also an ongoing uh, Season 1 build competition where one person, the owner of a build, can submit their build by May 1st and win a full set of Netherite if it is voted to be the best build of the first season of Chapter 2. And with that, that is all uh, that we have to say for today. That pretty much recaps most of the really important stuff that happened. There, of course, was a lot of really minor stuff that we just... It, I can't go over without this video being hours long. Um, that's just everything you need to know for the most part. Um, we will try to... I, I, I'm going to start doing this at least once or twice a week again because it's... it is really important and a lot of people have been really misinformed and just ignorant on a lot of things that have been going on recently because of the lack of a 
regular news source on here. So, yes, we will be doing this more often. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.